Have you ever wondered if some ordinary supplies you already have around the house would be perfect for crafting? Hi, I'm Jess from JessCrafts.com, and I'm here to help you get the most of your crafty time and supplies. So let's take a look. Today I have some stuff from the kitchen, and I want to try to emboss with it because I've been trying different uh, things to emboss with, and I have a couple of uh, videos already about that on my channel. And in a continuation, I thought I would sort of theme this one with a bunch of random kitchen stuff. So I have parchment paper, tin foil, some uh, like a plastic container, kind of like acetate, because you can purchase acetate, like specific crafting acetate, but maybe we can do it with the stuff we're already about to throw out. Uh, I have a bag like a plastic zip top bag. You could use whatever you have on hand. You could try to use one that like maybe had some dry goods in it or something. So again, it's a little bit less wasteful. And a pizza box. Any cardboard box would do. This is just what I had. P.S. If uh, you can't eat gluten, because I cannot, <laughs> um, this is the best frozen gluten-free pizza I've ever had. So uh, we're gonna try all of those with the new embossing folder from Spellbinders, their embossing folder of the month for November. But you can do this with whatever embossing folder you have on hand. This is not like a 3D embossing folder or anything like that. So I ran them all through the die cutting machine. I have a Gemini Junior. So you put your material in the embossing folder and then your clear plate on top and bottom. Then run it through. All the materials work just fine like that, even though there were some little bit of difference in the thickness in terms of cardboard being obviously thicker than like parchment paper, but I didn't have to do any special sandwiches and I did not damage my embossing folder this time, which I did last time I tried some of this experimentation. All right, so let's take a look. My favorite is the tin foil or aluminum foil because it's, I mean, it just, it really looks like foil cardstock, but obviously quite a bit cheaper. Also much more delicate. I'm actually surprised, yeah. See, I already just ripped it. Uh, I think what I would suggest, and I'm gonna try this, is putting like, first taping the emboss, or sorry, taping the aluminum foil to a piece of thin cardstock and then running it through again. But I just wanted to show you like the raw results of everything and then we'll work on like making cards and you know, what is the best way to do this. But yeah, beautiful result. However, very, very delicate already ripping in several spots. So then acetate, not really surprising. You've probably seen this before. This did warp quite a bit, which I don't know how normal that is for acetate and it can matter what thickness of acetate you have, but it looks cool. And I could see using it in a variety of ways on cards. Of course, it's a little bit difficult to adhere because it's see-through, which is kind of an issue for several of these. Cardboard boxes, probably not a really surprise to anyone. It basically just looks like craft paper. So it's kind of one of those things where it's like, hey, if you're running low on some traditional materials or you really just wanna make better use of stuff that's going in the garbage can anyway, it is basically indecipherable from just, you know, embossing craft cardstock. So go for it. Why not use your trash and prove it's not craft cardstock? Okay, then we had parchment paper. I really like this. It's very delicate. I think it works well with this particular um, embossing folder for sure. I was a little worried it would rip. And I'm just going to kind of manipulate it a little bit to see, because like as soon as I touched the tin foil, it started ripping. It's actually holding up pretty well. So that's kind of cool. Um, I do think I'd, you know, avoid manipulating it too much because I would be afraid that I would flatten it out again. I think it's a little bit more malleable and it would be a bit of a challenge to adhere because it is translucent, I believe the word is, where it's not like see-through, but you can get the light comes through it kind of idea. Um, and then the plastic bag. This one is probably the hardest to see and maybe a result that like on camera, I don't know if I'm going to be able to capture it, but in real life it looks pretty cool. And I'm thinking it would be neat for a shaker card. So kind of like you would use acetate for the window of a shaker card, you could use this plastic bag, but I think the advantage of the plastic bag possibly is that it's actually a little bit thinner and it being able to manipulate it, I wonder if like you could do something fancy with that. So for the experiment with the tin foil or aluminum foil, I 
added like adhesive strips to adhere it down and you can see the lines of the adhesive strips. I'm sorry if there's gonna be glare in this video, it's just gonna be the nature of working with reflective materials. But then the other one, I've covered the background like completely in a sheet of adhesive because then there won't be any lines from the adhesive just to kind of see if it makes a difference. I don't know if you'll notice after it's all embossed that those lines are even there. So we'll just, I just wanna experiment a couple different ways and this is the same thinness of cardstock for both. And then I just added strips of adhesive like my ATG tape behind these, uh, this solid sheet of adhesive because I figured the backside, it didn't really matter. We'll tuck it all around and we'll send both of these through the embossing folder to give it a try. Um, these are not gonna fold perfectly here. You can just kind of bring it up like that and uh, snip off that corner so nothing is hanging over the edge the way you don't want it to. This is the piece where I had the adhesive lines. You can still see them. They're pretty subtle, but they're there. So maybe use an adhesive sheet. I realize that kind of adds to the cost of this because what's kind of fun is that like, you know, aluminum foil is relatively inexpensive, but if you have to use adhesive sheets behind it, then you probably might be better off just buying foil cardstock, especially because it's so readily available. But I guess it's kind of fun to know like in a pinch or if you just wanted to make one card with the look so you didn't want to commit to a whole pack of foil paper on hand. And then you could color this with alcohol inks and that kind of stuff. I would just probably color it first because now that I've embossed it, I've put some stress on the tin foil. And so I don't think I'd want to go in and add color now. I think I would do that ahead of time. I usually prefer to be more of a show than tell kind of person, but I made the cards without the film just because there's a little bit of things going on. So anyway, this one is super, super simple. It's the cardboard box and I just took an ink pad and swiped it over so that it would catch the rays of designs. And then it's just a little background piece there. So that was so simple, didn't really even need a tutorial. But then some of these other, one, well, actually, sorry, this one's also super simple. I just took that piece and I let it be like a panel on my card and added some decorations to it. So again, not much to teach you in a tutorial there, but it's just kind of nice to see what it looks like. And like I said, for me, this is, you know, using aluminum foil is good in a pinch if you don't have foil cardstock or you don't want to invest in a package of foil cardstock and you could color it. Okay, next up. And some of you might be thinking, uh, yeah, <laughs> to some of the feedback I'm about to get, but adhesive does not stick very well to plastic, particularly the plastic bag, zip top bag plastic. And so this was kind of challenging. I needed to, like foam tape would not work. I had to use layers of cardstock instead. And then that was able to stick a little bit better, but yeah, foam tape, not at all to make a shaker card. So you could use a plastic bag in a pinch for a shaker window. Like if you, you know, again, you like, I don't have any more acetate or I just want to try a shaker card, but I actually kind of wouldn't recommend it. If you've never done a shaker card before, I wouldn't start with using this plastic because it's kind of refreshing. I would use the other plastic that I embossed in acetate. The only reason I didn't use mine is because it already had some printing on it. And yeah, so, but also like, packaging, like this plastic stuff, I would prefer to use that and emboss that and make it at my shaker window. Also, it is a very subtle effect, but I do think it's kind of cool if you're going to make a shaker card in any way to emboss the window. I like it quite a bit. I think particularly if you were doing a, cause you know, we're almost in the Christmas season when I'm recording this, if you were to emboss snowflakes onto a shaker card, I think it would look like onto the window of a shaker card, I think it would look really pretty. And then, this one, again, I should have been able to predict this, but parchment paper also doesn't really want to take adhesive. So while it has kind of a cool effect because it's translucent, so you can see my striped paper through it, it has that embossing detail. So basically I took a striped paper, I layered my embossed parchment paper over it, and then I put the star paper with the hole through on top of all of that. But yeah, like I could probably still pop this off. I used liquid glue and that worked pretty well. I would recommend liquid glue with the parchment paper. And yeah, tape adhesive, like my ATG, useless. <laughs> it did not stick at all, which because it's not, you know, it's 
it's meant to be used in your kitchen to make things not stick to it. So to be expected. When I was showing the cards, I realized I didn't mention all of the supplies, like the pattern paper and the die cuts and the sequins were all from the Spellbinders Time Offline kit. I think the sequins were from a different kit, but there were sequins in the Time Offline kit. So I did a whole video where I used the kit so you can get a lot more ideas for the different supplies in the kit if you kind of like the pattern paper or die cuts that you're seeing. Um, but yeah, that's where all of these extra supplies came from. Anyway... I think it was fun to experiment with some things that you have on hand. And it was kind of cool to see that if you didn't have a crafting material, you could kind of try out the look or use some of these ideas in a pinch. So aluminum foil for foil cardstock, um, paper boxes instead of craft cardstock. I also used the paper box around the edge here. So I guess the only thing is I guess I would be careful because maybe there could be an allergen on food boxes. So maybe they're not ideal if you don't know who you're giving them to. But this the, the food inside of here was completely wrapped. So it should be fine. And then, um, yeah, you can use the plastic bags or like packaging, acetate, whatever from your um, kitchen for a shaker window in a pinch. And then the parchment paper, I don't know, it's just kind of fun. Um, I think you can get deli paper to do something similar, but Again, I just think adhesive's not gonna stick very well to it, so be sure to use your liquid glue. If you found this video helpful, here's another video where you can find more ideas for enjoying your crafty time and supplies. Let me know you like this video with a share to your crafty community. Subscribe and click the bell so you don't miss the next template tutorial, and check the video description for product links. See you in the next video.